The heart of this series of videos on treating symptoms will be discussion of treatment options for the four most prominent symptoms of CFS and fibromyalgia, that is pain, fatigue, poor sleep, and cognitive problems. That's what I put there under major symptoms, pain, fatigue, <coughs> poor sleep, and cognitive problems, often called brain fog or fibro fog. As a prelude, this video focuses on four general treatment principles for symptom management. But before describing them, I'd like to mention that even though we're going to focus on four symptoms, people with CFS or fibro usually experience several or even many symptoms beyond pain, fatigue, poor sleep, and fog. Those are the ones I've listed down here. Other common symptoms include those shown on the slide here. Abdominal pain, that's uh, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. Uh, alcohol intolerance. <clears throat> Most people with CFS or fibro either completely give up alcohol or uh, greatly reduce their intake because of the effects on their symptoms. Uh, allergies and rashes. Anxiety. There's lots to worry about when you're as uh, uh, sick as most people are with CFS and fibro and there's so much uncertainty in life. Chills and night sweats. Depression. Dizziness. Fever. Headaches, either tension headaches or migraines. Uh, jaw pain. Uh, loss of libido, less interest in sex. Lymph node tenderness. Nausea, numbness or tingling in the hands, arms, legs, feet, or face, ringing in the ears, sensitivity to uh, sense information, light, uh, sound, and etc. And I know that's a big one because our article at our website down here, seafoodselfhelp.org, on sensory overload is the second most popular article, second most read article out of several hundred. Uh, number one, by the way, is our article on brain fog, uh, sore throat, and weight gain or weight loss. Let me also mention a related issue. Not only are there many symptoms as often associated with fibro and chronic fatigue syndrome, but often people who have CFS or fibro have additional medical problems such as sleep apnea, and food and digestive issues. So some of the symptoms you may experience could be due to conditions other than CFS and fibro. And the most prominent of those are described in the video in this series titled Related Conditions. So now on to treatment principles. Let's see if I can get down there. There we are, treatment principles. Treatment principles. Managing the symptoms of CFS and fibro usually involves the four principles that I've listed here. First, a focus on improving quality of life. Because there is no cure so far for either CFS or fibro, the goal of treatment is not cure, but rather controlling symptoms and improving quality of life. Medical treatments usually focus on addressing the most bothersome symptoms, such as poor sleep and pain. While treatments don't heal either CFS or fibro, they can reduce pain and discomfort, bring greater stability and lessen suffering. They all, may also lead to an increased functional level. Let me say a couple of things about medications. People with CFS and fibro often take multiple medications to address several symptoms. Because they are extremely sensitive to drugs, they are usually started with low doses, which are increased slowly. Drugs may have to be replaced periodically since it's not unusual for a medication to become less effective over time. This is called tolerance. Self-help strategies like pacing, which is the focus of a large series of videos uh, uh, in the, uh, on the same site where you found us uh, for the uh, symptom videos, uh, exercise and stress reduction can also help you feel better and more in control. Managing CFS and FM is not limited to treating symptoms. Down this line now. <clears throat> the two conditions affect many parts of life. 
people's ability to work, their finances, their relationships, their moods, and their hopes and dreams for the future. So managing them involves much more than just treating symptoms. And a management plan for CFS or fibro includes challenges such as addressing stress and emotions, getting support, and coming to terms with loss. Second principle is uh, experimentation. Finding the most helpful combination of treatments often requires trial and error. There's no standard medical treatment for either condition. That is, no medication that is predictably effective for CFS or fibro. For this reason, symptom control is usually achieved through experimentation. Experimentation is also useful to find lifestyle adjustments that are effective. For example, you may have to try different exercise programs to find one that helps you without intensifying your symptoms. We call this process of experimentation uh, being your own CFIDS fibro scientist. Third principle is to use multiple strategies. Because people with CFS and fibro have several to many symptoms, and because each symptom may have more than one cause, treatment plans usually involve multiple strategies. For ex example, treating sleep often involves a combination of improving sleep habits and the use of medications. It also frequently includes the treatment of sleep disorders such as sleep apnea. Cognitive problems, also called brain fog or fibro fog, are typically addressed with a variety of techniques such as the use of lists, doing one thing at a time, keeping an orderly house, <clears throat> doing many mental tasks when you're sharpest, managing stress, and using reassuring self-talk. In addition, you'll probably use a variety of strategies to address other issues, such as relationship problems, stress, emotions, and loss. <clears throat> If it all seems overwhelming, maybe you'll be helped by the idea uh, that one person in our program calls the 1% solution. She told us she remembered my saying that in my recovery from CFS, I improved at the rate of 1% or 2% a month. She wrote us that when she's feeling discouraged, she tells herself to focus on making a small change in her life, something that will bring a 1% improvement. To her, that feels doable, and it puts her back on a positive track. Fourth principle is to emphasize lifestyle change. If you have CFS or fibro, the way you live your life has a big effect on your symptoms, reducing them if you honor your body's limits or intensifying them if you don't. These impacts are so great that your success in reducing symptoms and regaining control of your life will probably depend more upon your efforts and willingness to adapt to CFS and fibro than on anything a doctor does for you. Let me repeat that. <clears throat> your success in reducing symptoms and regaining control of your life will probably depend more on your efforts and willingness to adapt than on anything a doctor does for you. Let me make the point a third time by quoting the words of uh, the famous uh, CFS fibro physician and our medical advisor, Dr. Charles Lapp. While your doctor's role is important, you should recognize that there is no known cure for CFS or fibro, so there are limits to what your doctor can do. The key to recovery is acceptance of the illness and adaptation to it by means of lifestyle change, for which medical treatment is no substitute. Let me end with some good news. The major symptoms of CFS and FM have several causes in common, including overexertion, deconditioning, stress, and emotions. Treating these causes with pacing, exercise, relaxation, and managing emotions has a multiplied effect since each strategy affects more than one symptom. We'll move on now to focus in turn on each of the four major symptoms of CFS and fibro, <clears throat> beginning with improving sleep. Well, we start with sleep because poor sleep has such widespread effects and because treating it can both improve quality of life and reduce other symptoms. <clears throat> 